In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up the camera to track an object, which is going through a physics simulation in Blender. The movements may be random in a simulation, but the camera will still follow the object, wherever it goes. In this particular example, we can see that the camera is moving with the target object, to ensure that a front view is captured always, irrespective of its movements. It might be difficult to implement, because a track to constraint alone, is not sufficient in this case, and the path taken by a rigid body, in a rigid body simulation, can be completely unpredictable, so you cannot set up a follow path constraint either, for the camera. Instead, we will learn a better method today, where the camera also moves along with the target object, while always looking at it. And for this tutorial, we will use this scene which we have created already. It has got some stairs here, and we have also added some pillars around it. These are passive rigid bodies, so they do not move in this scene. We'll add an active object, which will fall from some height, and then it will move, following the rigid body physics, and our camera is here, which will track that object. So let us go to the add menu, and add one, UV sphere. We'll drop it on the stairs from some height, so let us pull it up little bit, maybe like this. We can directly edit the Z location here, as 20 units. We need to then enable the rigid body physics for this. So in the physics tab, we'll enable the rigid body properties from here. This will act as an active object. And let us also increase the bounciness value up to 1. Now if we run the simulation, the sphere will drop and then move as per the physics engine. If you are not familiar with rigid body physics, you can check out the links given in the video description. Our basic setup is ready, we will now focus on the camera movement. Let us first turn on the rendered view mode. We have set up some fancy materials for these objects, just for the look and feel factor. In the camera view mode, we can see that the camera is currently looking at nothing, only these stairs are visible. We need the camera to always look at our target object, which is the first requirement. So we need to add a track to constraint, before we do anything else. While the camera is selected, let us go to the constraint tab, and then add one, track to constraint. In the target object, let us select the sphere. And, we can also move the camera a little bit away, from the center of the stage, so that we capture a better view of the scene. Let us also move it slightly toward the left. We can fine-tune this directly in the object properties. Let us go with this X location as, 1.5. And then, the Y location, maybe as, 30. Let us verify this by running the simulation. The camera is tracking the target object as expected, but it does not move from its current location. So if there is some obstacle between the camera and the target object, our view can get totally blocked behind it. And in case you have a large area, with many turns and bends, this track to constraint alone may not be sufficient to follow the objects, so we need some mechanism to move the camera as well. Let us now verify this once, through the camera view mode. You will see, initially, the camera works well. It tracks the white ball, quite perfectly. But as it moves far and goes behind an obstacle, the camera fails to capture it, so we must move the camera along with the object, but the question is, how? The problem with this is, you cannot use a follow path constraint, because this is going through a physics simulation, the motions are unpredictable, so it is almost impossible to create a path. So the next obvious thing that comes to our mind, is to create a parent-child relation between them. If we make this a parent of our camera, it will follow the movements of this object. However, that will not really work in this case, but let us also try that once and verify. So select the camera first. Then press the shift key and select this sphere. Now press control P to bring this menu. Then select object keep transform. This will bind the sphere as the parent of our camera. We can also set up this relationship in the object properties tab of the camera. Here, we have a section called Relations. If we expand this, we can see a parent field, any motion of this parent, or the sphere, will be duplicated at the camera. With this, let us now run it. We'll see that the camera goes under the ground, as it copies every movement of its parent blindly. And it even rotates around, when the parent sphere makes any rotation. This will create a messy output. It won't work for us. So let us remove this parent object from the camera, for the time being. We do need to make the parent-child relation between them, but in a different way, so that we can control the motions. So select the camera, 
and go to the Object Constraints tab. We have to first remove this track to constraint. Then from the constraint list, let us add one, Child of Constraint. Then, in this target object, let us select the sphere. This will bind the sphere as the parent for our camera, but the difference in this case is, this time, we can control which all transforms of the parent object should propagate to the child object and affect the child, which is our camera. We definitely don't want the camera to rotate, even if the parent object makes any rotation around itself. So we'll disable these rotation fields in all the directions. And similarly, we'll disable the scaling options as well. And, we don't want the camera to change its height during the course of its movement, it should always stay at the same height, but it should be otherwise free, so that it can move on the XY plane, following the movement of the sphere. So, we'll disable this Z field. Only the X and the Y fields will remain active. Now the camera should pick up the XY movement from its parent, as the simulation makes progress, but its height or the rotation should not be affected. But we also need to add one track to constraint like before. So let us collapse this child of constraint and add one track to constraint. And just like before, in the target object, we'll select the sphere. If we now run this, we'll see that the camera is not showing any random movement, it is doing its job perfectly by following the target from the front angle, making a suitable movement wherever needed. There is no rotation or any unpredictable behavior. This is exactly what we needed, so you can use this method easily in a physics simulation in order to follow any target object moving under rigid body physics. Let us also take a look into the camera view mode. So, the camera tracks our white sphere and moves along with it. The movement of the camera is so smooth that it creates no jerk at all, rather you get an awesome viewing angle for the moving object, and there is no obstacle or anything like that. However, the perfection of this output will depend on how you design these constraints. Depending on your scene, you need to decide which dimensions you should lock, and which dimensions you should enable. You may need to enable all of them in some particular case, or you may lock just one, or two of them, like what we did in this example. It depends on what type of view you want from your camera. Now, let us look at one more example. This time, we want the camera to capture a top view of the target. So, let us move it closer to the stairs, or the ball. And, we'll also pull it up so that it stays above the ball. Well, I am a guy who prefers to keep everything in a whole number, so we can probably enter some integer values here. For the Y field, let us keep it as, minus 10. And this Z location should be slightly above the sphere. The sphere is at 20. So let us place the camera at a height of, maybe 24. And then, in the Object Constraints tab, we'll enable the Z location as well. With this, if we start the animation, we'll see that the camera falls with the target, and it moves with the object, having all three dimensions enabled. This is just a variation of what we saw earlier. Let us verify this result also through the camera view mode. So, the camera captures the white ball from slightly above it, not perfectly a top view, because we did not place it directly at the top, rather you can call it a helicopter view. Anyway, I hope you got the idea, how to use a child of constraint and attract a constraint together to track an object which is going through some unpredictable or maybe a variable path, like in a rigid body simulation. We have created several such useful tutorials on camera movements and camera properties in Blender. You can check out the links or the playlist for this given below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.